All right, Tanya, let's talk a little bit about companion planning. And I get a lot of questions about companion planning. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what is it? Companion planning simply means that you're planting two different crops near okay. each other and you're trying to influence uh, pest pressure, mm -hmm. maybe reduce insects, or uh, get better yields, better tasting fruit, something <laughs> yeah. like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, can you give us some examples because that's what folks want to know. Right. Some good examples. Well, uh, companion planting, the most famous example is from uh, Native American history. Oh, okay. uh, many, many years ago, the Native Americans figured out that they could grow uh, vegetables in a companion planting setting okay. and get good results and they called it the three sisters. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So they would grow corn, beans, and squash together. Um, the corn would provide support for the beans to climb mm -hmm. and the squash at the bottom of the plant would provide shade and weed suppression for the plants okay. and um, would help with moisture uh, moisture loss prevention and then the prickles on the squash would keep the raccoons out of the corn right. and also because those beans uh, fix atmospheric nitrogen it provided a nitrogen source for the corn and corn's a heavy feeder so mm -hmm. they really had this thing figured out. Yeah I tell folks that all the time I mean they really figured that thing out and Walter you talked about that the three sisters sure. uh, time or two I've heard. Yes yes you know in the master garden right I'll talk I'll, I'll talk about that. He sure does. All right. mm -hmm. Good deal. So how can a home gardener know which combinations to try? Because of course they wouldn't want to try this. Right. right. Well, unfortunately, if you just <laughs> simply go on the internet and, uh -huh. and type in companion planning, you're going to get a whole bunch of information and maybe some of it's not right. Actually, <laughs> a lot of it may not be okay. right. Good. There were um, a lot of lists circulated through the 1960s and 70s, wow. and it's like this plant likes this other plant and dislikes <laughs> this plant. Okay. Um, and if you see a list like that, it's, it's, most of it has been uh, debunked by research okay. in, the, in the last couple, three decades. So those aren't reliable. But there have been a few combinations that have kind of withstood the scrutiny of the research. Mm -hmm. So one of those is basil, basil and tomatoes. Uh -huh. Now, basil and tomatoes taste great together on the plate, and they also <laughs> right. are really good to plant together in the garden. Uh -huh. <laughs> For some reason, basil, when planted with tomato, will give you... Uh, better yield in your tomato plants and you could also get better taste in fruit. Okay. And the basil will keep away thrips and help control the hornworms. Um, another one you can try, same kind of concept as the three sisters, mm -hmm. is planting your potatoes with your beans or peas because potatoes like a lot of nitrogen and right. the beans and peas fix the nitrogen right. and put it back into the soil for the potatoes. Okay. And then also onions, um, the aroma oh, of the onions kind of can keep away some insects. And so one of those is onions and carrots. Right. If you put onions you know. and carrots together, um, the onion can kind of keep away uh, the carrot fly. Sure, sure. I've heard that one. You heard some of those before too? Yeah, like? I've, I've heard of some of those, uh -huh. but that's a new one on me, the, the, the carrot fly with the onions mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. carrots. That's, that's a new one. That's, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, but this is one we always hear about though. What about planting those marigolds? Yeah, so what about that? That's probably the most common uh -huh. uh, one that people that people will try, and um, you know marigolds can um, get rid of nematodes, soil nematodes okay. in your in your garden. However, if you really have a nematode problem that you're trying to use marigold, marigolds to control, it's better to plant your marigolds a season or two before. Oh so that they can kind of have time to get rid of the nematodes. So it's, you get the best results not with a true companion planting. So if you plant them at the same time as the rest of the crops in your garden, you're not going to get as good a control. So it's not wow. a true companion plant to get the best results. Now if you want to try that, there's some cultivars that um, work better for that, like okay. Nema Gold, um, Go Golden Guardian, uh, things that have NEMA in the title. Okay, right, so, right, right. <laughs> are I guess you're not there. Marigolds, yeah, right. that, that'll take care of the nematode problems. And you know, there's been a study um, with uh, marigolds thinking that they could uh, ward off some insect right. pests. I was going to ask you about that, okay. Yeah, okay. so um, some researchers planted green beans, some okay. next to marigolds and some not next to marigolds, to see if they could control the Mexican bean beetle. Huh. Okay. As it turns out, the, the beans near the marigolds had fewer bean beetles, but they also what? produced fewer green beans because <laughs> the marigolds can um, exude a chemical to inhibit the growth of other plants oh. near them. 
it's kind of like an allelopathic right, situation. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, marigolds can try to reduce competition by stunting other plants' growth, and that's what it did with the with the beans. So you kind of have to be careful, uh -huh. you, you know, when you're going to use marigolds. So yes, it did control the beetle, right. but you didn't but get the result that you wanted. Who told you that's good? I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. So, but you need to plant the marigolds again, what, a couple of seasons before? Before, before to get the nematode oh. control, to, to, you know, really get the nematodes out of there. How about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, folks are running out now to the, you know, to the stores, nurseries, yeah. big right. box stores, to plant the marigolds. Yeah. Yeah, thinking that, yeah, if I plant them this season, they'll get rid of all the bugs for this season. But maybe not. But maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, but they'll be in good shape two years from yeah, now. Yeah, two years yes. from now. <laughs> How about that, though? That's, that's good stuff. Okay. Uh, is there a big picture idea for the home gardener regarding companion planting? Yes, I'd say the big picture with companion planting is you want to think polyculture instead right. of monoculture. Okay. So poly just means many. Right. So you can kind of confuse your insects when they're <laughs> flying by. They're trying to find their favorite host plant. Right. And if you have uh, kind of a jumble of stuff out there, you've got things mixed together instead of just everything in nice, neat little sections or a grid or a row. If you've got things mixed up that has different aromas, different mm. bloom times, different ripening times, you can kind of confuse or they'll maybe miss or overlook their favorite host plant. And I've successfully hidden parsley in my garden oh, okay. from uh, caterpillars by putting it in the middle of a whole bunch of other things okay. and making it a little bit harder for the caterpillars to find. So, so it actually worked out pretty good for you. Yeah. So think polyculture mm -hmm. instead of monoculture. And then the other thing you can do is plant lots of flowers, okay. which I, I always love to plant flowers anyway. But And you don't even have to plant the flowers right next to your garden. They can be a little just in the vicinity. Okay. And we call these insectaries. Mm. And so what an insectary is... It's like a nursery for your beneficial insects. Okay. So you want beneficial insects in your garden because things like ladybugs and lacewings kill your aphids um, and keep your vegetables, you know, a lower insect pressure. Right, so right. you want to keep those things around. And the way you can do that, because they have wings and they can fly off if sure. there's no aphids sure. to eat. Sure. But if you have a whole bunch of different flowering plants nearby, then they can go there and um, they can, you know, pollinate and they can kind of munch on mm. stuff there. It's a place for them to live until you have a pest problem and then they'll fly over there and take right. care of those and come back to your flowers. It's also good just to attract bees and pollinators sure. to sure your garden. Is. Sure. Mm -hmm. Wow. Tanya, it's good stuff. We appreciate that good information. Thank you much. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.